Good morning, good morning, praise the Lord everybody. Welcome to the Miracle Morning live stream broadcast. Um, as you know, the purpose of these live streams is to strengthen the body of Christ. And we are praying that this morning's word is going to be a blessing to you all this morning. I am already caught up in his presence. I have been up for... I got up at 4 a.m. this morning and began to seek the Lord concerning His Word for us this morning. And uh, the Lord has spoken and He has given me a word to share. Today is Monday, August the 19th, 2024 is the year. It is the 15th day of the month of Av in the biblical year 5784. And it is 7 a.m. here in the City of Righteousness, the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. Amen. So I'll give it a moment here and give people a, a moment to, to log in. And as you log in, would you just, we greet you and just, just let us know where you're going to be joining from this morning. This is a fresh word. This is manna. That has dropped this morning since before the sun came up. Before the sun came up this morning. On this Monday, August the 19th. Before the sun came up. The Lord was faithful to speak. And so this is fresh. Hot off the press. This is fresh. Word out of heaven this morning. And uh, I believe it's going to bless you. Amen. So. Praise the Lord. Shakarabasatayabasata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just going to enter in right now. We'll just enter in to the or enter in just let's just enter into the father's gates this morning with just a time of prayer as we just set the atmosphere prepare our spirits to receive this word this morning thank you lord lord we just enter in to your gates this morning lord with thanksgiving Lord, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you're faithful to speak to us. We thank you, Lord, that you're faithful to release your word to us. We thank you, Lord, for fresh manna, fresh oil. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, your protection, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you encamp about us that you place a hedge of protection around us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that because of the blood, our sins can be forgiven, Lord. We thank you, Lord, this morning for your forgiveness, Lord. Fresh forgiveness, fresh mercies this morning we receive, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace today as we begin this work week on this Monday, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God that is going before us, Lord. You go before us. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, that you never sleep, you never slumber, Lord. You are faithful in every moment of our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we may sleep, but you don't. We thank you, Lord, that we get good rest. We thank you, Lord, for your shalom as we sleep. We thank you, Lord, for your shalom as we rest, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just enter into your courts with praise this morning, Lord. We just worship you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you are our provider, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you speak to us. We thank you, Lord. We praise you this morning. 
because you are our mighty God, our mighty King. We worship you this morning, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. Sharabakata Yabasata. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shatatabakata Yabasata. Brosokoto Yabasata. We bless your name this morning, Lord. We bless your name this morning, Lord. Shototobo Kataya In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for your faithful love, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your love, it endures forever, Lord. Sharaba Kataya. We thank you for your faithfulness in every generation, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you keep your hand upon us. We thank you for your blessing this day, Lord. We pray that you would bless this word. <clears throat> that you would bless this time together in your presence, Lord. Lord, I yield myself to you. I pray that you would speak by your spirit, Lord. Lord, that I would hear clearly what you're saying. And I would speak it with accuracy this morning, prophetically, Lord, apostolically. We thank you that you guide us and that you lead us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to get ready to read this word out of Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 through 5. Blessings to you, Sister Tori. Blessings. Blessings to you. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3, 4, and 5. Would you go there with me? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 through 5. I'm going to ask my wife real quick. Can you click the fan button on there? Uh, I just don't want it to be making the noise. Or, uh, just that fan button. There you go. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to... Sorry, guys. The fan's going. I just don't want it to be blowing and messing up the sound for us here. So, amen. Deuteronomy 23. <clears throat> just give me one second here, guys. You need me to click it? Okay. All right. <clears throat> yep that's it thank you all right deuteronomy chapter 23 verses 3 4 and 5 this is what the lord gave me now sometimes sometimes the lord will have me like prepare a study and there'll be commentaries and I'm studying I'm digging in you know days before this time the Lord told me I want you to go to bed he put me to bed earlier than usual yesterday I went to bed he said I want you to go to bed you're gonna wake up early tomorrow and you're gonna seek me early so I was seeking him at 4 a.m. this morning and he was faithful as I came to the place of study I just began I prayed I had a cup of coffee I was praying I, I opened my Bible and I just began to just spend time with him in the word and as I had my Bible open and I was just reading and praying just reading and praying and then all of a sudden there's a moment as I'm reading something, there's this thing that the Lord does. It's just between me and Him. Just like you all have your own way that God will speak to you. He He did this certain thing that He's been that He does to me when He's speaking to me. Ever since I was a kid, I didn't know when I was a kid. I didn't know that that was the Lord. But now that I'm, I've I'm grown. <laughs> And now that I, I walk with him daily, I understand that thing that he does. There's a specific thing, and that's his way of communicating to me that, hey, this right here. And so God spoke to me this morning. 
and he gave me this passage that I'm going to read and I'm going to share prophetically what the Lord is saying and I'm just going to release the word of the Lord okay Deuteronomy chapter 23 verses 3 4 and 5 the scripture says no Ammonite or Moabite may enter the Lord's assembly none of their descendants even to the tenth generation may enter the Lord's assembly. This is because they did not meet you with food and water on the journey after you came out of Egypt, and because Balaam, son of Beor, from Pethor in Aram Neharaim, was hired to curse you. Okay? Verse 5, yet the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, <clears throat> but he turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. Okay, now get it. This is what the Lord gave me this morning as a prophetic message for us on this Monday, August the 19th. Okay. So, God is saying this. He's talking about the Ammonites and the Moabites. Okay? And we know that now through Jesus, <clears throat> that has been lifted. Because Ruth, which who, Ruth, who was David's great-grandmother, was a, was a Moabitess. Okay? She was from Moab. Uh, so, that part has been dissolved. Okay? But, but the scripture says, no Ammonite... Or Moabite may enter the Lord's assembly none of their descendants even to the tenth generation and then verse 4 it says this is because they did not meet you with food and water on the journey after you came out of Egypt okay now watch this the Ammonites and the Moabites they were canceled or they were barred okay why because of their cruel treatment towards the Israelites during their travels in the wilderness, okay? Now, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, okay, and they were in the wilderness, the children of Israel were at one of their most vulnerable times, okay? They were very vulnerable when they were wandering through the wilderness. God was taking care of them. Okay. They didn't have the home. They didn't have their their homes that they had in, in, in Egypt. God tabernacled with them. Praise the Lord. Amen. But in a sense, they were still very vulnerable. Okay. And so when the children of Israel when the children of Israel were, I'm so gone already in the spirit. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they were very, very vulnerable. Okay. Meaning they were at a place where people that had the means to help them. The children of Israel were in a position to where they could have used that help in that time. Okay, God was providing for them. But listen to what God is saying here. He says, He barred the Ammonites and the, and, and the Moabites because they did not meet the children of Israel with food and water on the journey when they came out of Egypt. So while they were traveling, they were on their journey in the wilderness, God had an issue with the fact that neither the, the Ammonites nor the Moabites extended a helping hand to the children of Israel in their time of need. In their vulnerable time, God is highlighting the fact that the Ammonites and the Moabites did not meet them with food or water 
while they were on their journey in the wilderness okay they didn't want to help them they didn't want to help the children of Israel children of Israel when they were vulnerable okay instead of wanting to help them here's what the Moabites did they hired Balaam okay they hired Balaam to curse the children of Israel okay <laughs> So it wasn't enough that they couldn't offer the children of Israel bread and water. They failed that test. And God highlights it here. He highlights it in the scripture. He says, because they did not meet you with food and water on the journey when you came out of Egypt. Okay. So they wouldn't they wouldn't even they didn't even want to sell them food or even sell them water, okay? And now God has an issue with that, okay? Forget about, you know, giving them some water or giving them some bread. They wouldn't even sell it to them. Okay? And if that wasn't enough, they hired Balaam to curse Israel. Moab the Moabites hired Balaam to curse Israel. But here's what happens. After they hired Balaam to speak word curses on Israel, in verse 5 it says, Yet the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Okay? He didn't listen to Balaam, to the curses that Balaam was a was attempting to release it says but he turned the curse into a blessing for you because the lord your god loves you come on someone say amen this is a good word this morning <laughs> yet the lord your god would not listen to balaam but he turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. The title of this message this morning is God will turn it for you. God will turn it for you. God will turn it for you. Listen, <clears throat> some of you may be in a vulnerable moment right now in your life, meaning you're in a time where maybe you could use a little help. Okay, now don't don't get me wrong. We don't look to people for help. God is our provider. God is our sustainer. Okay, God will provide for you. God's gonna provide. He's Jehovah Jireh, your provider, not people. However. God does take note. <laughs> Here we see very clearly that the children of Israel, God is noting the fact that the Ammonites and the Moabites had the means to help the children of Israel in their vulnerable moment. And they chose not to help them. Instead, they chose to hire Balaam to curse them and God is judging that thing now okay so this is a word right now okay this is how the Lord presented this to me this morning is that maybe you find yourself in a vulnerable season of your life it's like a wilderness season okay and maybe some people have rejected you Maybe some people have things to say about you that are not nice. God is watching over all of this right now. God is seeing this, okay? And every potential word curse that is attempted to be spoken against you, God is going to intercept that word curse 
and flip that thing around and cause it to be a blessing for you. Amen. He's going to cause it to be a blessing for you. So don't, don't be, don't let it trip you up if people are speaking against you. Don't let it trip you up if people are misjudging you or people have this to say about you or this to say against you. God says, don't worry about that. God says, I love you. And God says, here's what I'm going to do. Every time they mock you, every time they speak against you, God is going to take that and flip it around and cause what was meant to curse you, God is going to cause it to bless you. Come on, someone say amen. Someone say amen. It says that God turned the curse into a blessing. Why? Because he loves you. This is the love of God right here. This is the love of God right here. You cannot curse the ones God loves. You cannot curse what God has chosen to bless, okay? So, unfortunately, we deal with this type of stuff, people. Sometimes, sometimes it could even be your own family. Come on, somebody. Sometimes your own family can have some things to say about you. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, I'm just speaking, right? I'm just ministering right now. Sometimes it's the people that maybe you thought would have been there for you are actually they're not there okay they ain't there for you not only are they not there for you but they actually have things to say against you now now that ain't cool okay but god says don't worry god says don't 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 let that trip you up okay every word that is being spoken against you god is going to cause it to be a blessing for you. This is why Jesus said in Luke chapter 6 verse 28, Jesus said, "Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you." Did you did you catch it? This is why Jesus said, "Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you this is what happened to the children of israel okay when when they were when they were journeying through the wilderness they left egypt okay and 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 the moabites and the ammonites they mistreated them they mistreated the children of israel okay god was well able god took care of them the whole journey through the wilderness all 40 years god took care of them he fed them he kept their clothes pristine their feet then swell God took care of them okay that's not the point it's not the point is not saying that you need somebody the point is that they had the opportunity to help them out but they chose instead to mistreat the children of Israel and then attempted to curse them okay and but God says that he turned he turned that curse into a reverse and he caused it to bless the children of Israel Jesus, and when, when Jesus hits the scene in the New Testament, he tells us to bless those who curse you. Now, that sounds bizarre. You want me to bless those who curse me? Well, when you understand the dynamics in the spiritual reality of what's happening here, Jesus says, look, look, essentially, yeah, you can bless those that are cursing you, but you can thank them. You can thank them. Why? Because you know when somebody begins to speak evil against you, when they begin to attempt to slander you or assassinate your character and curse you, God intercepts that thing and he says, nope, that's not going to happen. And God takes that word curse and God puts a blessing on it and then God releases a blessing on you okay so listen bless those who curse you bless those who curse you next time somebody is speaking evil against you you can just begin to thank god you say hey you know what 
bless you. Bless them. Why? Because you already know God's going to take take that thing and flip it. You already know God's going to flip that thing. Okay? And then Jesus says, pray for those who mistreat you. Okay? Now, when people mistreat you, when people mistreat us, it's very easy to become bitter. You have to be careful that you do not allow bitterness to take root in your heart. And you really have to pray. You have to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, help me so bitterness doesn't take hold of my heart. You have to pray. You might even have to fast, okay? Because your flesh, your flesh wants to just let bitterness take root. Your flesh just wants to lash out at them, okay? But see, if you're in the spirit and you take hold of the word of God, when people do come against you in that manner, you're able to bless them instead. You're able to pray for those who are mistreating you. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing, okay? And so we have to pray for this, okay? You just need to know that God's hand will take care of you. You just need to know that maybe these situations provide for a time for you to analyze who is really with you and who is really not for you, okay? When God leads you into a wilderness season, it allows you to really take inventory. Number one, personal inventory. It allows a time and a season for you to say, Holy Spirit, assess me. And like David said, Lord, making me a clean heart. Purify me. Purify me. Let the wilderness be a purifying season for you. Okay, so number one, it allows for a time where you can do a self-assessment and, and ask the Holy Spirit to do a checkup from the neck up. Okay, it allows for a time for, th for this self-analysis to go on. But number two, it also gives you a time and a season for you to take inventory of who's really for you. Okay. Who's really for you? Who's not for you? Okay. I mean, it's been said that you can really find out who is for you when you're at a low place in your life. Okay. So the low seasons can also serve as great purpose for you. Okay. Because it'll, it'll create a time and a space where you can really see who's with you and who's not with you, okay? Nonetheless, you are blessed. Nonetheless, the Lord has already spoken blessings over you. Don't get consumed when you begin to hear if people are speaking against you. Do not let that consume your heart, okay? The word already tells us, blessed are those who are persecuted, okay? If you're dealing with any type of persecution for following the Lord Jesus, maybe some people that are even in your family have turned on you because you've made a decision to follow Jesus. And maybe they've had some words to say concerning you. Just bless them. Just pray for them. Why? Because God is not going to allow any of those word curses to land on your head. Okay? 
if any Balaam's come out against you, just begin to bless the Lord. Just begin to bless God. Just begin to pray for those who mistreat you. Just begin to pray for those. Right now, just ask the Lord. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to pray for those who have mistreated me. Say, Holy Spirit, give me the strength to pray for those who speak evil against me. Say, Father, I already know that you're turning the curse into a blessing. Say, Father, I ask that you turn it around for me because you love me. Hallelujah. Shakataya basata. Brashakataya basata. I hear the Lord saying, Blessed are you when many speak evil against you. I hear the Lord saying, Blessed are you when they attempt to slander you for following me. The Lord says, Do not be concerned with those who speak evil against you. The Lord says, Keep your eyes on me. The Lord says, For I am a good and loving Father, and I speak blessings over you this day. The Lord says, Though many have turned against you, the Lord says, I am the God that will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. The Lord says, When one speaks against you, the Lord says, I speak for you. Brashkataya basata. The Lord says, they may have rejected you, but God says, I have royally elected and selected you. The Lord says, did they not speak evil? Did they not slander and speak evil against my anointed David? Did they not attempt to curse him? The Lord says, but I intercepted every curse. And I chose to bless David, my anointed. The Lord says, Though they attempted to steal him of his crown and rob him of his honor, the Lord says, I placed upon David what no man can take. The Lord says, I placed honor on David, and I placed a crown on his head and a scepter in his hand. And the Lord says, What I give, no man can take away. And the Lord says, the doors that I open, no man can close. The Lord says, just begin to lift your hands and praise me, for I am the lifter of your head, and I am the one who chooses to bless. The Lord says, pray for those who mistreat you, for they know not what they do. The Lord says, bless those who curse you, knowing that I am the good shepherd that sees everything. The Lord says, I will cause the curses to fall to the ground, yet my blessings from heaven will be bestowed upon you like heavens do. The Lord says, I anoint you this day with fresh oil. The Lord says, I empower you to stand. And I see right now in the realm of the spirit, like a mirror, a mirror that ricochets things that are attempted to be thrown at you and launched at you. The Lord says, though they might launch evil things against you, the Lord says, I will cause it to ricochet. It will never touch you. The Lord says, the curses will never touch you. The Lord says, they will only be fallen upon you as blessings. The Lord says, this is why I say rejoice, rejoice, rejoice when people speak evil against you. Know that those words that are spoken against you will be turned for your good. The Lord says, what the enemy meant for evil, I will cause it for good. Stand this day, the Lord says. Stand this day knowing that I am for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And even those family members that have turned against you and have been used even by the enemy to speak things and try to provoke anger out of you, 
the Lord says, just begin to pray for them and know that I have given you the power to stand. And some will say, how does this one continue to come around? How does this one continue to stand in love? The Lord says, they will see my supernatural goodness upon you. The Lord says, they will see my goodness and my mercy through you. Even as David chose not to take up the sword against his son Absalom, the Lord says, I am the God that gets vengeance. The Lord says, be careful not to take vengeance into your own hands, for I am the judge, and I will weigh the matter out, and I will release the verdict as the judge that sits on my throne above the circle of the earth. I am the judge of the universe, and I am righteous, and I am holy, says the Lord. The Lord says, just continue to walk in love, continue to walk in the path of righteousness, continue to be led by my spirit, saith the Lord. The Lord says, this day I pronounce a fresh blessing over you. I feed you with manna from heaven. The Lord says, as you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The Lord says, resist the enemy and resist the urge to flesh out against those who slander you and mock you. The Lord says, did they not slander me? Did they not mock me? They plucked my beard and they pierced my side and nailed me to a cross. Yet in that moment, the Lord still said, Lord, bless them for they know not what they do. Bless them for they know not what they do. In that moment, in this most vulnerable moment, Jesus, in his most vulnerable moment, when he was nailed to a cross, beaten and battered, taking his final breaths in that in in his most vulnerable moment Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit had the ability to look up at the Father and say Father forgive them for they know not what they do oh my gosh forgive them for they know not what they do people this is not an easy word this is not an easy thing to do i'm not even going to try to act like it's easy to forgive those who have cursed you like jesus to forgive those who plucked your beard and whipped you and beat you and battered you some of you in the realm of the spirit some of you spiritually speaking people have plucked out your beard and people have lashed your back they have they have come against you uh, uh, they backstabbed you they lashed your back they backstabbed you they rejected you they pierced you with words i want you to picture jesus on that cross being nailed to that cross and he says father forgive them for they know not what they do and of course we know that the Father rewarded the Son and gave all authority and all power unto Him. And Jesus stripped the enemy of His power. And of course we know that, that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, alive and well, ruling and reigning. God, listen, God will reward you. For your obedience and God will reward you for 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 forgiving okay you cannot forgive someone in your own strength you have to pray and ask God to help you you have to pray and ask the Lord to strengthen you to forgive those who have cursed you okay only through the power of the Holy Spirit can you do it but I'm telling you there's a blessing every time people curse you. That's why you shouldn't let it discourage you. You should rather change your posture and just begin to rejoice. Because you know that your heavenly father will turn every curse into reverse. He will turn every curse into into a blessing this is this is the this is this is this is a supernatural phenomenon this is why 
sometimes people when they come against men and women of God it's like the whole world can turn on them but yet you will see that all of a sudden they emerge even higher it's like God elevates them even more why because God will never allow them to succumb to those word curses God will always cause them to rise up and live above that curse God will always bless them so that they're living in another dimension and they will those curses will not be able to reach them because of the blessings of the Lord on their life every time try, someone tries to cut you down God will elevate you a little bit more every time somebody tries to chop you down God's gonna thrust you forward even more that's just that's just his nature okay why? Because he's never gonna allow you to succumb to that. He's never gonna. He's never gonna be okay with that. He's gonna turn that thing around because he loves you. Because he's the Lord, your God, who loves you. Our job is simply to bless those who curse you, and we can't do it like out of spite. You can't do it with the wrong heart and with the wrong spirit. Like you know what? Oh, bless you. Yeah, bless you, brother. You can't do it like that. It, the motive has to be love. The motive has to be that you're walking in the spirit. The motive has to be that you're praying that God with his grace and his mercy will touch that person and they will come to the knowledge and revelation that Christ is king and, and that eventually they will repent. Eventually they, they will repent and ask God to forgive them for their motives and for their actions, okay? And so we just have to know that God is in control of this stuff, people. God is in control of this stuff. You may be in a very vulnerable moment. You may be in a very, very vulnerable time of your life right now, okay? God is in control. God is ultimately in control. Somebody may have been mistreating you for years, for years they may have been mistreating you through the power of the Holy Spirit only through the power of the Holy Spirit but he will do it he will give you the ability to pray for those and if you continue to pray for those who have mistreated you eventually you're going to see a supernatural turnaround eventually there's power there is power when you pray for those who have who mistreat you you start moving in some dimensions of pa of power in and with god when you do that okay there are there there are some dimensions of power when you pray for those who mistreat you okay and, and you're going to see the hand of god in, in your and it's a genuine authentic prayer that you that you're praying father i pray that you that you right now they don't know what they're doing but i pray that you would give them the revelation of who you are god that you're a loving father and that they would come to know you and you know what's going to happen one day they're going to realize what they were doing one day they will come to you and they're going to say hey brother sister uh, or, or maybe it's a family member they're gonna come they're gonna say you know what i'm sorry for the way i mistreated you i don't even know why i was doing that i don't know why i was saying those things against you but i'm sorry and i apologize and you're gonna see the power of god you're gonna see the power of god begin to restore and mend things and you're not going to hold it anything against them because you know everything that they did against you and everything that they spoke against you, God was causing it to bless you. I said, God was causing it to bless you. So just walk in that. Just walk in that. Just, just know. Just know. That God is causing all of that to be a blessing for you. What the enemy meant for evil, God is turning it for your 
good. Come on, somebody. I'm going to get ready to pray this out, okay? This is what God gave me, okay? It's not some e- it's not some elaborate study this morning, but praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. I mean, you know, sometimes these these type of messages can, can be more powerful than a study. Did you catch what the Lord said this morning? Did you catch what he said? The title is God will turn it for you. But did you catch the essence of this? I'm going to read this scripture one more time. Okay. And then we're going to pray. It says, Deuteronomy 23, verses 4 and 5. It says, This is because they did not meet you with food and water on the journey after you came out of Egypt. Okay? And because of and because Balaam, son of Beor, from Pethor in Aram. Naharaim was hired to curse you. Yet the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but he turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. Listen, I just heard the Lord speak to my heart right now as I read it this final time. I just heard him speak a word to my heart right now. Bless you, Sister Cynthia. Yet the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam, but he turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. When I read it, I heard the Lord say this right now. There are some people, you're going to hear this message, and you made it this far into it, or 48 minutes into it. There are some people that are going to hear this message and you've been through so much mistreatment and you've walked through so much slander and essentially attempts to, to of defamation of character, of slander. Uh, of word curses you've walked through so much of it and the lord says he sustains you that's how you're still able to stand through it all because god says my hand has been on you that's how you're able to stand today but the lord says this the lord says there is a blessing coming the lord says that there is a blessing that is coming for those who chose to, to, to stand in love in the midst of that cursing, in the midst of those attempting to curse you, the Lord says, for those who chose the path of love, your flesh wanted to rise up. You may have even lashed out at times, but, but even after you lashed out, you went to God and you repented and God got you right again. God put your spirit right where it needed to be again. And, 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 you, and you've always gotten back to that place with the Lord of just posture of prayer and asking him for help to, to stand in this. I just heard the Lord say there are people that are going to hear this message that there is literally, literally like a miracle in motion. There's literally a blessing that is coming because you've, you've made the choice to pray for those who mistreated you. You've made the choice to pray for those who were attempting to curse you. God says, I'm going to reward you now. The Lord says, I'm going to reward you. You shed many tears. You spent much time 
crying out to the Lord and saying, why am I dealing with this? Why are they mistreating me like this? They, you know, why, why is it that they're, they, they left me hanging like this? They used to be for me. They're no longer for me. And, no, and not only are they no longer for me, but they've actually turned against me now. And I didn't do anything to them. I hear the Lord saying that jealousy has taken hold of some of those people's hearts. But the Lord says continue to pray for them. For their breakthrough. That the spirit of jealousy would be loosed from them in the name of Jesus. But the Lord says know this that he has released a blessing over you. And it is going to be a reward because you chose to stay in the path of love. I'm not talking like I, what I saw. I'm not, I, I'm not going to say it because I think he was saying one thing specifically to me. But what I saw was like very, very significant blessing. Like something that's going to change your whole situation. Like something that's going to get you out of your dilemma. Okay. What I saw was a very significant blessing coming from the Lord. That can, like if you feel like in your, you're in a pit, like it, it's literally going to get you out of the pit and then some. Okay. This is what the Lord is saying this morning. God says, I am going to turn it for you. I'm going to turn the thing into a blessing for you. Rejoice, 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 says the Spirit of the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning that you have spoken. Lord, you know every need. You know everything that we need. We thank you that you are meeting our needs this morning. We thank you, Lord, that today you have spoken fresh blessings over us today. There, we receive your fresh mercy, your fresh grace, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this week is going to be a supernatural week of supernatural favor. This is going to be a week where we're going to see your hand, Lord. That we're going to see your hand literally turn things that we didn't we didn't even know people were speaking these things against us we didn't even know we didn't even know they were saying these things against us okay some of you you were just feeling sick to your stomach and you didn't know why but it was because literally people were speaking evil against you the bible calls that witchcraft okay they were mocking you and you didn't know why you were feeling so weak. You didn't know why you were feeling so lethargic. You didn't know why you were feeling sick to your stomach. It was your spirit was telling you begin to pray. Because the spirit knows everything. And there were literally people that were mocking you. And slandering you and cursing you. You didn't even know some of this stuff was going on. You were just walking with God. You were just happy to be walking with Jesus. But God says, don't worry. God says, I'm going to cause it all to be turned for your good. I'm going to bless you. The Lord says, I'm going to bless you. And so, Lord, today we thank you that you have given us the supernatural ability to bless those who have cursed us. And Lord, we thank you that you've given us supernatural strength to pray for those who have mistreated us. We're not doing this with some smarty pants, smart aleck spirit. No, no, no. We're doing this with, out of the genuineness of being obedient to your word, Lord. And doing our best to walk in love. And doing our best to walk in righteousness. And to walk as living epistles, Lord. And to walk as temples of the Holy Spirit. That we could be 
ambassadors of yours, Lord. That we would be your ambassadors in the workplace. Your ambassadors within our family, Lord. That we would be good witnesses of you, Lord. That people would see the testimony of your goodness and your mercy in and through our lives, Lord. We pray that you would strengthen us, Lord. We pray that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done. We pray, Lord, that you keep us. We thank you, Lord, because you are our keeper, Lord. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you're, you're helping us, you're encouraging us, you're strengthening us, you're renewing our strength like the eagle. And I pray that this week we walk in the fullness of that which you are releasing upon us. We receive it this day. We receive it this day. We declare that this is a week where we will see the turnaround. And we're just going to know. We're just going to. This is what the, the goodness that's coming is. We're going to say, This is the turnaround. God turned it around for me. God turned it around for me. Come on, just say that. Say, God, thank you for turning it around for me. Thank you for turning it around around for me say father thank you for turning every curse into a blessing over my life thank you lord for turning every curse into a blessing over my life and you and i know you're doing it father because you love me and and lord i pray that you help us to always remain humble and to always keep a good spirit let love abound in our lives, Lord. Let your love flow out of our hearts, Lord. Help us. Help us. Help us to walk in love, Lord. Help us to walk in forgiveness, Lord. We bless your name this morning. We love you, Lord. We love you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. Shakarabasata. There it is, Brother Juan. That's it right there. That's the message today. God, thank you for turning every curse into a blessing in my life. That's that's the essence. You caught it, okay? God, thank you for turning every curse into a blessing in my life. Every curse turned into a blessing. Every curse turned into a blessing. Every curse turned into a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's the power of the cross right there. That's the power of the cross. That's the power of Calvary's cross. As it turns every curse into a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you an opportunity right now to get in on this. Okay, Just say this. Say, Father in heaven. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Say, Jesus, I believe that you died on a cross and you rose again on the third day. Say, Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. I belong to you. Say, Father in heaven, thank you for adopting me into your royal family. Fill me with your spirit and help me to walk a path of righteousness according to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. That's it for today, folks. We bless you this day. On this Monday, go forth this day. Every curse turned into reverse. Every curse turned into a blessing. We're going to see it. We're going to see it this week. I have hope and expectation. I know when I was spending time with the Lord this morning at 4 a.m., as I was reading my word, I know what God, how he highlighted it to me, and the Lord spoke this word to me. He said, this right here is the word for this morning. I released it. Now you receive it. Go and be blessed. Go in the joy of the Lord. We bless you this day. We love you. More importantly, Jesus loves you. As we say here at Roaring Eagles Ministries, remember you were born to roar and destined to soar. God bless.